important because the staff of the Honors College, particularly the advising staff and the staff of the Fellowships, Opportunities and Undergraduate Research Office is going to impart a lot of great information to you all. Uh, and they warned me that the more I talk, the less you will actually know by the end of the hour. So I am going to wish you all well. Welcome once again. We are delighted to have you joining the Honors College and looking forward to seeing you in August. And with that, I will hand it off to my colleagues and take it away. Thank you, Dean Denneman. Okay, so let me fire off my presentation and share my screen. And we will get rolling. Okay. If, since I can't see anybody, if someone wants to open their mic and tell me that you can see my screen. I'll say it. All right, great, thank you. So welcome again. Uh, my name is Ann Kroll Lerner and I'm the Associate Dean for Students in the Patrick Leahy Honors College. I wanna thank you all for stopping by here today to hear more about the college um, and your or your students role in shaping this community. I am joined by three members of the community who will each share their thoughts with you shortly. Um, but first, I will give you some broad brushstrokes to get you thinking about what it means to be part of the Honors College, um, to be a student here, not only as you reside here for the first two years, but also throughout your uh, full four years in college. After I'm finished, I'll turn you over to Martha Lance, the Associate Director for Wellbeing, who will talk about the peer mentor program and her area of great passion creating a foundation of well-being for lifelong success. After Martha, Dana Mitchell, our senior academic advisor, will discuss our advising model and provide an overview of the first semester and show you, I'm realizing I should have clicked a slide. There we go. Um, Dana's gonna show you some, um, some ways to stay connected to our community after she talks about the academic advising program. Finally, you're gonna hear from Sasha Daly, who was sitting in your seat just last year, and she will provide a fresh student perspective on the PLHC. And then last but not least, we'll save some time at the end for some question and answer to address anything that you might have that comes up during the presentation. Um, but if after this presentation's over, if you have anything that comes up later, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll give you an address to use um, on the last slide. All right, I'm gonna advance this. All right, so the first thing that I wanna say is that what makes this a dynamic community is you. Each year we welcome a class that brings personality, initiative, and interest to our community, and you change it. You bring your unique ways of thinking about the world, your particular backgrounds, and your excitement, and we provide space and time for you to share those ideas with each other and with some exceptional faculty who teach in the college. You won't just grapple with the ideas in the classroom, but you'll also have the hallways and the study spaces, our kitchens, even our offices to continue those conversations and to make meaning of what you're learning. Our curriculum is focused on contemporary issues that face our community, our country, and our world. And you're going to have four small seminars over the course of two years that we hope challenge you and build a foundation to translate what you learn into future action. Our staff and our faculty also help to explore these ideas across five broad areas, the five areas that we call the pillars for your growth. We're going to help you explore those areas and then build capacity in those that best suit you. And those areas are leadership and service, which is the legacy that we've inherited from Senator and Mrs. Leahy, cultural engagement and well-being, which are two strategic initiatives within the college that support you and broaden your horizons to tackle these issues, and then the creation of new knowledge through research. We hope that you will add vibrancy to this community as your thinking becomes ever more creative and collaborative. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Martha Lance. And I will advance the slides, Martha, since I think I'm the only one with control. <clears throat> you are. Uh, thank you, Anne. And good evening, everyone, students and parents. 
It's really nice to see you. Um, we're experiencing the heat wave. So just to show you, this is the view from my house, uh, sunset. And it feels like that is the sun is still shining here in Vermont and getting warmer. But here we are, beautiful Vermont. This is what you have to look forward to, um, the landscapes, the community. Central to our community in the Honors College are the peer mentors, a group now of 20 students, upper class people, who will be guiding the first years, all you first years, you new students, through the transition from high school to college. It's a big one. You may think you have it all figured out, but there are going to be some surprises and some bumps and along the way. And you will be assigned a peer mentor who is there to guide you. Um, the peer mentor groups, the mentee groups are about 20 students of um, like college, hopefully. Uh, and they are exceptional people. I've had the pleasure of working with the peer mentors for, oh boy, almost 10 years now. And they are remarkable. And I'm, I'm hoping I'm speaking to some future peer mentors out there this evening. They've gone on to medical school. They've gotten Fulbrights. They've gotten all sorts of prestigious academic awards. However, it's their humanity and their brilliance at helping us form a better community that really is most humbling to me as I watch their growth, I watch their leadership grow, and I watch them serve you coming into UVM and to the Honors College. The student voice in advising is, is uh, golden, and the peer mentors then know the ins and outs of finding an apartment when you're a junior, of uh, going through your major, of selecting courses, registration, uh, but they also do a lot of programming on uh, for our community, from pancake breakfasts to kickball tournaments to all sorts of events that bring our community together. So the peer mentors then are current students. You will be assigned a peer mentor. You will be receiving an old school snail mail handwritten letter from your peer mentors in July, welcoming you to our community. They will also be at move into personally welcome you and help you move those microwaves up and down the stairs. So your peer mentors, I can't say enough about them. They are remarkable. They've had the transition from high school to college successfully. And many of them, we have a pretty good core alum group, are doing amazing things. And they're just really wonderful. I tell them that being a peer mentor is an opportunity for a deep dive into the human condition. And you are welcome to ask them questions that push their knowledge of UVM and the Honors College. You, I, I hope you will feel comfortable asking them questions about, hey, am I in the right major? Um, how, did, how, how did that work out? Uh, I've had peer mentors who have changed their majors numerous times um, and succeeded in the end finding their way. So they are there for you. So that's a little bit about the peer mentors. Okay, and you can hit the next one if you like. All right, so here's my other hat, well-being of uh, you as individual students and the well-being of our community is um, very much in our minds these days. There is uh, a lot of information out there um, about the uh, epidemic of anxiety and loneliness. In fact, the Surgeon General had a little something to say about that today. So we're very conscious of trying to create uh, a culture of care in our community. We have coaching for well-being available for all, uh, all honors college students. Coaching is not therapy. It's sort of that sweet spot between academic advising and, um, and therapy. I'm a nationally board certified coach um, and we have on um, staff uh, several other coaching joining our, our efforts and um, we'll have group coaching available. And basically it goes like this. There's a wheel of health the Osher Center for Integrative Health. Uh, if you look that up on our website, or I can, if you have questions about it, feel free to reach out to me, uh, is really a way of organizing our efforts. We're interested in getting people moving. We're interested in getting people sleeping better. We're interested in people having good nutrition. I looked at the uh, statistics of the class. We have quite a few food and nutrition students, so that's, that's great. Um, we hope to... Um, tap you for those skills, your environment. Early on in the fall, we're gonna have a horticultural therapist come and talk about how to create a, a great environment in your dorm room. Spirituality is another part of the wheel of health for those who are interested in that. Work-life balance, we could all use a little bit of that. 
and the mind-body connection. So it's very much an integrative approach to your well-being. We use the term well-being as opposed to health and wellness because well-being is more encompassing, and I think it's it's uh, it's more just in that it isn't just about eating your broccoli. Well, I'll never tell you to eat your broccoli unless I get $100 for your mother. Uh, eating your broccoli, yes, probably good for you, but coaching for well-being comes from you. You determine what we want to talk about. To me, the two most important questions in advising and also in coaching, first of all, a simple, how are you? But a heartfelt one. The second one is, what are you wanting? Coaching for well-being is not about what you should or should not do. It's about what you want to do, what behaviors you want to change so that you can live more fully and um, and happily. So that's a little bit about coaching. We also are supplementing our coaching program uh, with a lot of events throughout the year. Um, we will be working with culinary medicine, a group from the hospital, and other people to bring in um, bring in well-being and in the different facets of life. We also are forming a new program, and all you Rubenstein students listen to this one, called Footsteps in Nature. We're trying to think about nature RX. Nature is a prescription for, for better well-being. What does that look like? We have a lot of nature areas around us. In fact, UVM has 10. So there's opportunity to get out in nature, and it's uh, scientifically been proven that walking in nature helps um, mitigate stress. So they're sort of all over the place uh, thinking about well-being. We have a lot planned and we're always welcome to new ideas coming from students. I like to view the Honors College as a braided, braided rug, particularly when it comes to well-being. You're concerned with your own well-being, so we are, but we also are responsible to the community's well-being. And we have an opportunity to be agents in, in pushing for each other's well-being and the well-being of the community. So um, anyway, I'm all ears. If you have things that you like to do that uh, are healthy, let me know. Okay, so welcome. All right, so over to me. Hi everyone, my name is Dana Mitchell. I use she, they pronouns. I'm an academic advisor in the Honors College. Um, part of the type of work that I do is also with technology within the Honors College. So today you'll hear me, you're, you're gonna hear me kind of talk about um, the, the first year experience and then also some of the different technology that we use in the Honors College. Um, and then after that, I'll pass it off to Sasha who will give um, her student experience in her first year in the Honors College. Um, so in the first year, there's a couple of things that um, I just wanted to let y'all know uh, kind of what things are going to look like from advising in the Honors College. Um, there will be a first year read. Information should be going out about that. Um, the book is called The Great Derangement. Um, that book will also play into the, the assignments that you're going to be doing in your Age Call 1000 class. Um, during uh, Welcome, uh, the when you when you arrive on campus during orientation, um, we'll be there during move-in day and we'll be there to do some fun activities with you during orientation. Um, and then during common hour, that's that's a block that you have every Wednesday from, I believe it's 5.05 to 6.20 every Wednesday. Um, and during that time, we're going to be doing some different programming. The peer mentors will come in and do some stuff. Um, the advising team will come in and do some stuff. Um, that's also a prime time where we do like registration events um, and just make sure that um, all first year students are in the know with what's kind of um, going on and around campus. Um, during the first week, that first Thursday, there will be the student resource fair. Um, Sasha might be able to talk about her experience from last year, but last year um, we had for over 400 students and over 20 different tables. Um, that's a great opportunity for you to go around, talk to UVM board, see what kind of events are happening, learn more about Week of Welcome. Um, student Financial Services will be there, so it'll be a great time um, to connect with Judy Buxton from Student Financial Services and see if there's any questions that you have about your financial aid. Um, we also have the FOR office, we have us from advising, um, there's going to be study abroad opportunities to learn about, um, so that's a, a great first place to be able to kind of check in and see what's going on around campus. Um, during the first six weeks, that's when you're going to be getting a lot of uh, information from us, um, check-ins just to see how you're doing. Um, you know, we want you to come in, we want you to come and talk to us, whether it's um, just checking in, saying hi. Sometimes we'll have treats in the office. Um, Martha loves tea, so sometimes we'll have tea. Um, the peer mentors also put on First Coffee Fridays, so that's a, a great event to kind of check in and see, see how we're all kind of doing. Um, 
just some fun events and things that we um, put on the Honors College. And then registration kind of happens mid-semester. Um, that's a great time for us to check in with you and for you to check in with us. Um, we just want to double check your schedule, see how things are going, make sure you like your major, that sort of stuff. Um, and if you have any concerns or anything, we can definitely workshop and see where we can get you to. Um, at the end of the semester, we also like to check in just to kind of see, you know, where you're landing, how you're feeling on campus. Um, and then at that point, usually during the first common hour, we'll do a, um, a reflective exercise where we're going to have you write a letter to yourself and then you'll receive that uh, during the last week of classes. Um, so it's a great time to uh, self-reflect and see how your first semester went. Um, so during a lot of these peak times, you might receive emails from us or text messages from us. Um, and I'll kind of talk more about the technology at the end of my presentation. Um, so in general, your Honors College advisors are here to support you with academic decisions. So not sure about your major, looking at potentially switching colleges, looking at um, if your transfer credits are going to count, did this AP class actually count towards um, a transfer credit at UVM? Just all of those kinds of things that are related to academics. Um, and if we don't know the answer, we know where to point you to. Um, and then we'll kind of help you along with that process and help you make those connections. Um, we kind of consider ourselves the compass to point you in your desired um, direction. And we have relationships with all of those different offices on campus, so we can kind of be the conduit for you. Um, and feel free to change the next slide. Thank you. OK, so you'll see a um, QR code on your screen. Feel free to scan that. Um, I'm also going to put the link in the chat just in case. Um, this is to our Linktree account. So um, the first thing that you'll see is a link to the Patrick Leahy Honors College website. We're going through some updates right now, so that will kind of roll out slowly throughout the summer. So what you see right now might not be what you see in a couple of months, and that's OK. It's going to be very similar information. Um, and then the other thing that you're going to see is the advising syllabus. This advising syllabus has the most pertinent and up-to-date information on advising. So through this, you can see um, the type of work that we do, our mission statement. Um, and then when you scroll down, you can also see what Patrick Leahy Honors College advisors can do and what home college advisors can do. Um, this is a great stopping point to talk about kind of a little bit about what the difference is between home college advising and honors college advising. So we help support honors college curriculum. So HCall 1000, HCall 1500, so on and so forth, um, helping you get into research, helping you um, in your thesis process, all of that fun stuff. Um, but for those of you that have already gone through um, your home college uh, registration appointment, some of you may have already, some of you might not have already, um, during that process, you would be able to talk with an academic advisor in your home unit. Um, so like SEMS, CAS, um, like home college units and um, you might have been able to talk about your, your schedule and classes that you should take. So they will know more about, um, like in biomedical engineering right now, you would um, have to take like physics and chemistry. But if you um, earned uh, Chem 1500 credit, then, you know, the, the folks in SEMS would know more about that than we would in the Honors College, but we can help you through that process. Um, and if you have any questions that we're not able to answer, then we can definitely send you to the right people. Um, so we kind of work more as a conduit in that way, but there are some things that we um, unfortunately don't have supreme access to. So, um, but we're always here to help you um, in that process. So this is a little bit about um, the differences between. Um, and then you can go ahead and look through this um, advising syllabus. And then towards the end, you'll see um, all of the different colleges and what their junior set junior and senior level um, curriculum requirements are. So that's information that you'll you'll need to know in the future. But right now you can just peruse it if you'd like to. Um, and then back to the link tree, you can see all of our different social media accounts. So um, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, the um, Instagram, we also have one for the Student Equity and Action Committee, SEEK. We also have one for um, the FOUR office. And then Facebook, there's one for the main PLHC group and for FOUR. Um, and on LinkedIn, there's one for four and for um, the Honors College. So we're, we're prevalent, we're around um, on social media, so feel free to check out those pages. Um, when you become a student in the Honors College, oftentimes we'll be able to post um, the new updated information about events and registration and advising um, through those social media pages. So definitely feel free to check it out. Sometimes we also do social media giveaways, which is pretty fun. Um, so if you wanna win some cool uh, PLHC swag, that's the best place to do it. 
Um, so one of the newer things that we're going to be uh, implementing this upcoming year is Suitable. Um, this is going to be based off of the five pillars of growth that Anne had mentioned earlier. Um, the implementation is still rolling out, so we don't have concrete information about it yet. So I'll, I'll hold off on the main surprise and that'll come out um, within the next month or two. Um, we also will email out weekly bulletins and then that will include all of the um, uh, event information that's happening around campus. Navigate, most of you, all of you have probably already used it by now, but um, Navigate, we can text you or email you through Navigate. Um, so that's also going to be a way that you'll be able to um, get more in the know information about things that are happening on around campus is because we'll we'll have that um, more ease of access to be able to to contact you. So the other new thing that's happening is we are going to be building a um, Brightspace page. I'm not sure how many of you have been in Brightspace yet, um, but all Patrick Leahy Honors College students will be added to Brightspace. Um, and so you will have um, a more easier uh, modality of access to the information from our web page. Um, you will all be added on August 1st. So at that point, we'll you know uh, roll out some tutorials, but um, that'll still be for another month and a half. Um, and the last thing that I'll plug is we are still hiring for two new student workers in our office. Um, so if you have any questions about that, feel free to let me know. Um, Sasha is also one of our student workers, so she'll be able to kind of talk about her experience. Um, we are still hiring, so if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Awesome. Thank you so much for listening. Sasha Daly, I'm a second year neuroscience major. Um, and so a little bit about me. So my academic interests, I actually started out as a neuro, I started out as a nursing major. Um, I switched to biological science and then I wound up picking neuroscience because it was just more specific into what I wanted. Um, I'm also a pre-health student. So currently I'm on a pre-PA track. Um, and I'm also a first generation student as well. So going to college can be really scary, but it doesn't have to be. Um, but for me at least, so basically me being a first generation student for anyone who doesn't know what that means, um, neither of my parents completed a four-year degree. So for me, I'm the first person in my family currently who's actually going to college and doing the whole thing. So it's really exciting, but also kind of nerve wracking at the same time because you don't really know what to expect. All colleges are different, but also we have amazing support staff here that are able to help inform everybody on what's going on and what's doing. And I find that UVM is very good at doing that, especially within the Honors College as a community. Um, so I guess some of the things that intrigued me into joining the Honors College were just like the people. So at first, honestly, I thought of it as something else to kind of add to my resume when applying to medical school, which now is PA school for me. Um, so at first, that was like the main decision for me of going to UVM was, oh my gosh, there is an Honors College. And that's really something extra that I can gain a lot from that can help me like enhance my experience. So is that a huge thing? Yes. Is it my big thing now? Absolutely not. The community of people are just so unique. There's everyone of all different majors, all different schools. You don't see the same person twice. But the same thing that we all have in common is our love of knowledge. We love knowledge. We're so curious about so many things. So that's something that's a really amazing pillar of the PLHC. Um, honestly, some perks for anyone who doesn't know, we get early registration, which is really cool because you can actually get into all the classes that you want to get into. For the most part, no promises. Um, there's also a lot of extra advising support as well. So I'm always in the office because I work there. And so Dana and I just always chat about everything. Um, so it's really awesome just to be able to walk downstairs in your dorm and walk in and just be like, okay, hey, can someone like chat with me for a minute? Um, so that's always super helpful. So you have a lot of extra support literally built into where you live. Um, there's a lot of research opportunities for upperclassmen, which you can do at any point, but upperclassmen usually do most of it. Um, so in the fall, I get to start kind of looking at what I want to do for my thesis, which is super exciting because there are so many super interesting labs that we have. Um, I didn't even know this when applying, but being in the Honors College put me in the absolute best position to succeed. Um, just being around, like all my friends are in the Honors College, um, or at least the most of them, not excluding other friends, but... Um, there's a lot of really cool people there. So honestly, we just all clicked immediately. And so it was just a place that I really felt like I belonged. Um, and so that was like really awesome. But also, we're all in similar classes. So I, you know, there's people in all different majors. So you're easily able to find someone who's taking similar classes to you. So honestly, there's just so many people that you can go to just to go do your homework with, go study with. So it's a community that's really just very helpful for succeeding academically. We kind of all just support each other in any way possible. And so I find that that's really, really special about us. 
Um, and also we have a really great proximity to really cool things. We're really close to the gym. We're close to Redstone. So there's a bunch of concerts that happen there, which like classical music, music concerts, not actual legitimate concerts. So don't want to give false information there. Um, we're close to a dining hall. We're close to Harris Millis. We're close to um, Living and Learning, which has all sorts of really cool restaurants, including the Skinny Pancake, one of my favorites. Um, and we're also really close to the bus stop, too. So if you ever need to just go to Target, it's like a two minute walk away, which is really cool. And also all that trans uh, transportation is free for all UVM students, which is really awesome. Um, yeah, so Dana was talking about the resource fair and the week of welcome. So your first week at UVM, you'll have there's just so much stuff going on. I have no idea what they have planned for this year. But when I went in, there was a ton of free stuff. So take full advantage of all of that. Um, lots of that your first week. The resource fair, you get to meet so many new people, but also just learning about all the different ways that you can possibly connect on campus. That seems to be something that UVM is also very good at, is getting you those connections. That's what you're paying for when you pay for college. So you should be receiving that. So whether it's within the Honors College or within meeting other people, there's pre-health advisors, there are so many other people that Dana mentioned earlier that are just not grabbing on my mind right now, but there's so many different things that you can go and do. Um, so it's a really great way to kind of get you out in the community. So you're not questioning, oh, like what can I do to kind of help further enhance my resume? What can I do just to have some fun? Like that's kind of why we have all these sorts of events. So it's very accessible to just see what can I do to get involved? So you're never questioning, like, oh, no, I don't think I'm doing enough. There's always something that you can do. So it's really awesome that we have so many people who are very interested in really just helping you to become connected to your community. That's something that's so important, but also it really sets you up to do well after you graduate. Um, so also balance. When I went into the Honors College, I thought I was signing on like my death wish. I was like, oh, my gosh, there's going to be so much work to do. Um, Really, it's not any different than just being a normal UVM student. So a lot of our classes, all of our classes count for something in the Catamount Core. So that's like your liberal arts section. So you're really not taking extra classes because there were classes that you would have already taken anyway. So your classes can usually count for something else. You can also look at the classes and see what you need to check off and then try to register for that class as well. That's something that I've done in the past. Um, so really, it's not anything extra. It's just something different than what you normally would have typically done. Um, but they are modern topics. So they're things that we're talking about. We're talking about contemporary challenges and issues. So really all that curiosity, you can kind of take to your honors college class and kind of just dump it all out there. And we have some really interesting discussions. Your first semester, it's almost always, you're like sitting in a circle, like senior year English class, and you're just discussing all the different things that you've been reading. Um, so they are reading and writing intensive, but they're so interesting. So my first semester, I had um, a class where I was reading all sorts of different like modern works, which aren't super modern as in modern today, but modern as in like 18 and 1900s. Books that I never would have picked up if I was not in that class. Was it the class that I picked? No, it was the class I was pre-registered into, but they were all really interesting things to read. So I'm kind of glad that I was put into that environment. So that's why a lot of people, I just encourage you to go into your first year with an open mind. So if you get a class that you don't necessarily like, you might actually end up loving it because your first year of college is really the first year that you're asking yourself, what do I wanna do? You know, your entire year, like your entire life, you've been put in these classes where you've had to do math, you've had to do science, you've had to do English and history and all of the other things. Um, and so now you're kind of being put in a position where you actually get to ask yourself, what do I want to do? So getting the experience to be able to take so many diverse classes you really are able to see what you do and don't like. Maybe you take a class and you hate it, but then you know, okay, that's not for me. And now you know that. So that's still a valuable piece of information. So there's always something positive out of the classes that you take. Um, and just this past semester, I took a class uh, from the philosophy department about theorizing oppression and privilege, which probably the most interesting class I've taken by far at UVM, even though it has nothing to do with my major. It's so interesting. Um, but you never know what classes you're going to be in and how amazing they're going to be. So just definitely keep an open mind. And yeah, that's what I got. All right. Thank you, Sasha, Dana, and Martha. Um, I told you the students bring the enthusiasm. That's absolutely exemplified by Sasha. I so appreciate you. Okay. That is really the end of our more formal presentation. So we've left plenty of time for questions and answers. 
Now I have one first question is I don't know if your microphones actually work. So I don't know that turning on your camera or raising a hand is going to work in this situation. But if you want to type any questions you might have into the chat. Um, oh, there's a camera that went on. Oh. So we're here to just answer any questions that might have come up from this presentation or from other information that you've gathered so far about the Honors College or more broadly about the University of Vermont. Okay, questions are rolling in. The first one is, is there anything students have to do about housing? Who wants, I tell you what, I'll ask the questions in my panel. Do you want to do you want to take these on as they come up? I can take the first one. So with housing, basically you're going to be assigned a slot where you're able to move in. Um, so if you don't have a roommate yet, you're going to want to get one of those. You can either go random or you can choose one yourself and add it onto your student uh, housing portal. Um, but basically it'll be assigned a time when you and your roommate can go in and select a room that you want. So you can do a suite or you can do a private room. So just whether or not you want to share a bathroom with the room next to you, typically you're able to choose. Um, so really just making sure that you're getting uh, with that. Um, also, if you have any other questions about that, please contact Res Life. That's what they're there for as well. Um, and move in day is the Wednesday and Thursday of August. Let me pull up my calendar so I can get those exact dates. Uh, move in is going to be August 21st and 22nd. And so later on, you'll probably get an email saying what day you're going to be moving in. Okay, thank you, Sasha. Uh, the next question is about the first year read that's going to be assigned, and I can give you that title. It's called The Great Derangement, and you will be receiving that in the mail. Um, so not to worry, you'll get that book sent straight to your home address. Uh, the next question, how many first year students are in the Honors College? Martha, Dana, can you give me a ballpark on that first year? I, I think it's in the 260s. Okay, about 260. 64 um, or so, yeah. Okay. So, and everyone living together in U Heights North for the most part. Um, when will students be able to meet with their honors advisors? Dana. Absolutely. We have Navigate availability open now, so you should be able to make appointments with us and Navigate if you'd like to. Um, if Navigate is kind of acting funky for you, feel free to send us an email. Um, you can either use the honors.college at uvm.edu, or if all of us want to put our emails in the chat, feel free to email us um, and we'll make sure to contact you. Okay, fantastic. The next question, the next two questions are actually about registration and when registration starts for the first year students and whether or not a particular course fits their schedule and what they can do about that. Yeah, so usually for your class registration for your first semester, um, I don't know if it's different this year, but last year when I did it, I got an email from my home college advisor. And so I had to meet with her to get the hold taken off of my account so I can actually register myself for classes. Also, if you have any other like bills that haven't been taken care of, usually they'll also place a hold on your account, um, which shouldn't be an issue yet since no one really has to pay bills yet. Um, but you should be getting an email from your advisor to meet with them at some point. Um, and then you can pick out your classes and see what's available, what works best for your major. Um, and as far as the switching your age call class, you can totally switch your age call class if there's availability in another one. Um, if there's not, you might just have to stick with what you're in. Not everybody has the perfect schedule their first semester, unfortunately. Um, but if you're pre-registered, you just have to make sure you go to that first meeting with your home college advisor so they can take the hold off of your account and then you should be able to switch. But also be open to different topics as well. You know, they're all interesting in their own way. You never know. Okay, there's another question about priority registration for classes for first year students. Martha, you want to take that? Sure. So the, the cool thing about being a first year in the Patrick Leahy Honors College is that you do have priority. Actually, you have day one. You register when the grad students <laughs> register. So you're way far in advance of the other students on campus. OK, and then someone asked about H call 1000. That is indeed the only fall semester requirement. And then in the spring semester, you'll take H call 1500. So there's just one 
is called class per semester for your first two years. I just want to clarify something with that real quick. Um, so when you okay. register, yeah, so you'll, you're also registered for common hour. So you might see in Navigate or your transcript that it might say H call 1000 twice. It's because one of them is your seminar section and one of them is common hour. So you may see that and it might look a little bit funky, but you know, if you're registered for um, the first iteration of physics for engineers, then it's also going to look like that because it's a lab associated to it. So um, it's it, in the registrar sense, it's kind of like a lab, but so you might see that twice. So I just wanted to throw that out there in case you're like, what's that? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you for highlighting that. Okay. Now I have a question about um, your honors college room assignments and can honors college students room with people who are not in the honors college? Uh, for the first year, you must uh, room with a honors college student, which makes a lot of sense because, again, you're forming your community. I think you'll meet a lot of friends on your floor. Uh, and then, obviously, um, so, so no, the first year you, you will be rooming with another honors college student. Okay, Martha, you want to take this next one, too? So it's about the dorm rooms themselves. Or actually, Sasha, you probably have more of an insider's view on this one. Um, are the dorm rooms limited to two students or are there three students as well? So it really depends. There are triples that are available. Um, I'm not exactly sure where they are. Um, the majority of people do doubles. Um, there's a very occasional forced triple, but I have not seen that a lot within the Honors College, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, but you totally can do three people if you want, um, just as long as there's availability. I would want to promise you a dorm room with three people because who knows what's going to get taken and what won't. But there are tons of triples all over. Okay, right, thank you for that. Um, here's a question about this syllabus, and I'm assuming it's about the first year that it's called 1000 syllabus. It says I tried to access it but was unable to. When will students generally get access to that fall syllabus? I think that's, that's a great cool. question. Oops, so sorry. Um, the right. advising syllabus will be added to the Brightspace page. Um, I will try to figure out why Canva isn't working for me, and I will send it again in the chat. So sorry that that happened. Okay, great. And then, you know what, technology, Dana, how do you get onto Navigate? That is a great question. I replied to that chat um, as a reply in the chat. And um, I put in a link for the student login for Navigate. Um, okay. If that doesn't work, let me know. Um, email me and I can help you sort it out. Okay, fantastic. All right, here's someone who's thinking far ahead. Is graduation in three years out of the question when you are in the Honors College? I can take that one. So I'm actually graduating in three years, super exciting. Um, I'll be graduating with the class of 2026, not 27, even though I am going to be a sophomore this year. So definitely not impossible. I have a lot going on. I'm pre-PA and I'm neuroscience. So there's a lot going on there. Um, it's not impossible. It really depends on what your major is. So there are some majors where you really can't get out of four years, like nursing, engineering, probably some other ones as well. Um, so there are definitely some where three years would be out of the question because of really just the intensity of what's going on and also needing to take certain classes before others, forcing you into being here for four years. Also, if you want to be here for four years, enjoy your time while you're here. But three years is definitely a great financial choice as well. Um, but it's really kind of just a big game of almost like Tetris, almost of seeing what fits where inside of your schedule. So I don't know. I came in as a sophomore when I came into UVM. So that's kind of why I'm able to graduate year early. I have the credits for it. I'm able to get everything that I need to get done within three years. So now I have two years left, which is awesome. Um, but it really just depends on what you need to get done. Um, so it's kind of just figuring that out. You can kind of play around with your schedule. That's also what your academic advisor is there to help you with. Um, the advising office, we're able to kind of help people see what they need. Um, if you go onto your My UVM, there's always under your advising tab, you can go onto your degree audit and kind of see what you have left and what you need. It's a really fun thing. I love to play around with it because then you can also see what it looks like if you switch your major as well and what you already have done. So it's a really great tool to kind of look at what you have, what you need, what are all the possibilities for a certain requirement. Personally, I use a Google Sheet to organize all my stuff into different semesters. Also thinking about how many credits you want to take a semester. Some people only want to take around 
15, 14 credits a semester. And so if you're doing that, you might be able to get by doing that for three years. Personally, I'm not able to do that. So I'm taking 18, 17, 16 credits every single semester that I'm here. Um, so it really depends on what kind of lifestyle you want to live. If you're going to do super hard stuff in your academics, then there also has to be some give in your personal life. You know, you can't be doing, you can't be everywhere all at once, you know. So really making sure that you're keeping your mental health very healthy, making sure that you're not super overwhelmed. Um, your first semester, usually you're encouraged to take maximum 15 credits just for that transition into college. So it really depends. After about one semester, you can kind of see what do I feel like in these classes. Also taking into account the difficulty of the classes that you're going to be taking and how hard they're going to be and how intense they're going to be. Um, it really depends. A lot of classes with labs as well can be overwhelming. I have a bunch of science classes. So a lot of my classes are four credits, but they also have a lab attached. It's like three hours a week, plus a ton of other hours outside of class. So it really depends on what you're able to do. So kind of a loaded question there, but it's really on a case to case basis. But the Honors College won't prevent you from graduating a year early. Um, really, it would just be what classes you're going to be taking. Okay, we have a question about payment. Um, when is payment due? Do we pay per semester or do we pay the whole year at once? I have not a clue when payments are due, but it is by the semester. So usually in the summertime, you'll pay for the fall, figure all of that out. So any of your scholarships that you get from high school, if there's like a community scholarship foundation of any sort, you'll have all those sent over to UVM and the billing office can definitely help you with that. Also in my UVM, you have a billing tab where you can kind of go and see what does everything look like. Also in, I forget what it's called, but in basically your portal where like your applicant portal for UVM, you have your financial aid message. Um, so you can definitely see what all of that looks like. I know that UVM also offers monthly payments, I believe. Um, so definitely things to look into. Definitely reach out to billing if you have more questions about that though. Absolutely, okay. Here's a couple more questions about um, roommates and roommate assignments and when that information is shared. I feel like that's in general a residential life question. Um, and also there's a near weekly newsletter that is coming to all incoming first year students um, from orientation that addresses a lot of these common questions. So if we don't have a definitive answer from my panelists here about when those roommate assignments go out, you will definitely be receiving that information from residential life shortly. Okay, here's another question. What are the benefits slash extra amenities of living in the honors dorms? Okay. I love this question. Okay. I'm glad you so, did. <laughs> so you won't be sharing stinky, smelly bathrooms with your floor. You will have a bathroom either just to your room or between you and the room next to you. So if you share a bathroom with the room next to you, that's what I did last year. It's called a suite. Um, which don't get confused by the term suite. There's not actually like a living room area between your rooms. So sad, I know. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> you do have a bathroom. So the bathroom situation is great. There's usually anywhere between like six people and at a minimum of two people sharing the same bathroom or one of, I guess, if you have a single and you have your own bathroom, which is kind of cool. Very rare though. Um, but that's always great. You have laundry in your hall, so or not in your hall, sorry, you have it in your tower. So at the bottom of every single tower um, of rooms, there is a laundry room. You don't have to pay for them, which is amazing, um, but you do have to bring your own laundry detergent, so make sure you have that. Um, there is central air, so we have air conditioning, no huge chunky air conditioners hanging out of your window. It's central air, which is great. Um, and there's always heat in the winter and you can also control it in your room as well, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. It's a little iffy sometimes. But when you move in in August and you and your parents are all sweaty from lugging all your stuff into the elevator and up the stairs and cleaning everything out, everyone else is going to be sweating. And guess what? You won't be because you have air conditioning in your room. So, yay. Um, so the Honors College definitely has its perks. Um, so you are you're getting the best of both worlds, honestly. Thank you for that list of honors been building benefits. Um, here's a really good one. Am I supposed to pick my classes before the meeting with my advisor or will I be choosing the classes with my advisor? 
That's a great question that I'm happy to cover. So with your home college advisor, um, you will be registering for a meeting with them through Navigate. Um, during that appointment, you should have been block scheduled into some classes, depending on your major, depending on your program, depending on your college. Um, that might change which classes you were pre-registered for. But during that meeting, you can talk to um, your home college advisor and they'll be able to give suggestions on potentially changing your class for academic core requirements. Um, if there's a different lab time that you're hoping to get in a class. Um, so they'll be able to kind of assist you with that schedule. Um, uh, full-time student status is between 12 and 19 credits. On average, it's about 15, um, but it really depends on you and your student experience and transfer credit and all of that fun stuff. Um, so bring that to the attention of your home college advisor when you have that meeting. Um, and if you have any questions, post that or want to chat with us and see if there's anything that we can help support you with, feel free to reach out. Okay, here's someone who is inquiring about the job in the Honors College, and I can say, yes, it is federal work study, and yes, it is available on JobX, so please feel free to uh, reach out through that system and apply. Um, there's a couple of questions here about the accelerated master's programs here at UVM um, and how they work, how they dovetail with the Honors College curriculum. Yeah, also happy to cover that one. So the Accelerated Master's Programs, AMPs, um, there's 26 on campus that interact with the Honors College. Um, we're trying our best to find ways to allow theses that happen during your undergraduate degree to count towards a graduate degree thesis in the AMP program. Um, it's a lot more complicated than that one sentence explanation made it sound. So I was happy to chat about what that might look like in your specific college. Um, it might mean working with your home college advisor working with the graduate college to try to figure out a way to make all of that work. But we have had students successfully be able to participate in um, finally completing one thesis to count towards both requirements, both their graduate thesis and their honors college undergraduate thesis. There was another question about graduating in three years, how that interacts with an AMP. Um, so in that case, it could put it it could potentially be a three plus one or a three plus one and a half program, um, depending on kind of how your credits play out and what you're looking to achieve. Um, that is one of those things that um, moving into an AMP, there are some uh, some Legos that we kind of have to build up into an actual figure. Um, so definitely work with us and we'll uh, kind of help you to sort out what that will look like. Okay, I'm gonna take this easy one. Does the dorm building have a kitchen? I can answer yes, yes, it does have a kitchen down on the main floor, and there are study spaces on each floor. And then another question for Sasha, can you talk about balancing a job with all your classes and your honors classes? Yeah, so having a job is really great because I get to be with Dana and Martha all day long, and I get to occasionally see Anne and the dogs. Um, so great. So our office is super dog friendly. We love that. UVM is very animal friendly. So definitely a perk to being in the office. Um, my job specifically, love my job. Um, Dana asked me at the beginning of every single week, when can you work? And so really it's um, working around my schedule when I'm able to be there. So there's never a super strict requirement of, okay, you need to be here at this time because you get out of class exactly at once. So you need to be here five minutes later. I'm always able to be very flexible um, of when I can work. I kind of just sit and I man the front desk. So I'm able to kind of help people figure out where they're going in the office. Um, and also sometimes if there's no one else available, I can help give some basic advising to my the best of my ability without making people promises and saying, yeah, you'll definitely be able to do this when that's actually indeed incorrect. So I do my best. Um, having a job in general can be a little bit tricky. So going into it, um, you know, your first semester, you never know what to expect. Some people have all different transitions because all of our experiences are also different from high school. So there's not really, I mean, also not one high school prepares you better for college than another. That's a complete myth. They all do their best and where you're at is where you're at. There's also a lot to be said about life experience as well. Um, but everyone has a different transition period. So for me personally, I found that balancing a job was very easy because I was able to choose my hours. So, I mean, I also do get to sit at my job though and study because it's work study. So I get to sit there and I get to study for class, do my homework and essentially get paid for it, which is really great. I mean, I love it. Um, I mean, I also do legitimate things. I do do my job, I promise. Um, I do do things. I don't just sit there and twiddle my thumbs all day, but 
Um, I'm also able to really explore what I want to do. So I've been helping with our social media efforts this past year as well, doing some more of that next year. So it's really just a lot about what works for you, what works for your schedule. If you know that there are certain days where you're like, okay, I want to work this day and I want to work this day because I have this huge homework due the next day, then that works out great. And if you know that there are certain days that you really don't want to work, that's great too. Like, for example, I get to do all sorts of things. I get to sit at a desk. I get to go to all sorts of events. I get to be at this event and get paid for it just to talk to you all about my great experience. I could yap all day about it, um, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, so I think it's really cool. I think balancing a job, it can definitely be a little bit tricky as you're making that transition period into college, but it really is at the end of the day, whatever works for you. So if you want to wait a little bit into everything to get a job, that's totally fine. If you want to apply to a job at H call where they're going to be very flexible about what you need, then that's a great thing to do too, because Dana is a very understanding person. And if you say, I can't work this week, she says, okay, have a great week. Hope your studying goes well. So it's really up to you of what you want to do and where you want to work. So not everyone else's experience will be as great and positive as mine because not everyone is as blessed to have Dana as their boss. But if you work for H call, that will be the same shared experience for you. Okay, that was fantastic. Um, so Sasha, you mentioned in the chat something about res life and the Zimi. Can you clarify what the Zimi is? Yeah, so Zimi is this app that we have. Let me pull it up on my phone so I can show everyone what it looks like. Um, essentially, you should have Zimi. So it kind of looks like this on the homepage, if everyone can see. So there are different chats yeah. that you can enter. So there's one for the Patrick Leahy Honors College. Um, and so everyone can kind of look in there. Different college reps, or if you have my title, my title's influencer. You can kind of chat about all these different things. You can talk to other people within the Honors College. We would love to see some more activity in that chat too. Um, just throwing that out there. But it's really just for you to utilize to get connected to your community in any way possible. So if you reach out on there, you can always find someone who will be able to direct you in the direction that you need to be going. So if you have a question about something and one of the college representatives can't answer that for you, they'll obviously point you in the direction of where you need to go. So if you have questions, you can ask ResLife. I think there is a residential life chat on there as well. Um, I'm not sure. I think there is somewhere. Yeah, there's a hashtag ask ResLife under the admit section. So you can always chat in there and ask a Res Life representative to help you out, which they're always more than happy to. Um, but Zimi's a great tool to get connected with people, ask advisors different questions, just chat in different communities to see what's going on. You can also maybe meet your roommate there, who knows? I met my roommate on Snapchat, so I think that's really cool. But we all have various ways in which we meet people. So really just using it the way that you want to, but it's kind of like a social media for college admits. Fantastic. Thank you for the explanation. Uh, okay, here's one that may, well, it's something. Um, when do we find out about UVM Go the for PLAC? Dana, Martha, you have stumped our panelists. Okay, I think that should like earn someone some swag. I tell you what, this is going to be one of those instances where we're going to look it up and we're going to send that information out to you so that you will have that information. Um, it will show up in that um, link newsletter that goes out. So when you get updates from PLHC, it'll pop up in that space as well. But we'll try to get an answer out to you before that. Okay, Dana, you've answered the question about AP credits. Um, here's a question. Is it common for honor students to double major? I can feel that one. Uh, uh, certainly it is not uncommon. Uh, we encourage people to explore the interconnections between disciplines. So very often students may major in two disciplines or they may even have a dual degree, meaning they have majors in two different colleges. However, it does take some advising and this is kind of our bread and butter as advisors. We look at you holistically. We will quiz you to see why it makes sense for you to as I did, major in history and anthropology, and I got a PhD in historical archaeology. So it does make sense. However, there is an, an opposing philosophy that if you have two majors, you may be spreading yourself too thin and you may miss out on a deep dive into a particular discipline. I mean, Sasha, you, you can speak to that. Neuroscience is a, is a, a very much mingling of two disciplines. Uh, but I 
I adore this question. Honestly, I love figuring out from you what you're interested in, what possibilities there are. I sometimes think first years are like beamed in from Mars to UVM. You may think there's only biology. There's only pre-med. There are tons of different healthcare serving majors and opportunities, integrative health, preventive health, nutrition, food. So do not necessarily limit yourself with what you think was familiar in high school. That's the cool thing about college. You're going to be broadening your horizons. I think, Sasha, you kind of went through this. And we adore people who are uh, perhaps a little flummoxed by what to major in. Love that. We get to corrupt you, number one, but we also invite conversation. Again, it's always what is important to you. Not your mother, your grandmother, et cetera. I once had one of my peer mentors as a first year arrive at my doorstep at 10 of five, the last day of ad drop. She was in engineering because her grandfather told her to go there. She was desperately unhappy. Within 10 minutes, she and I rearranged her schedule completely so that she could go on in economics, a very different course of study. So this is this is what your advisors in the Honors College are for, to ferret out what's important to you and to make sure that you don't have blinders on. Get those antennae out and look around at your environment. We will make connections. If we don't, if I don't have a peer mentor who is in your exact major, the peer mentors know people. It's all about connections. And that's what we do well in the Honors College, I think. Sasha, you, okay, am I right about some of this stuff? Go for it. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll tag along to that. Um, so double majors are not uncommon. There's a lot of people who are able to manage that very well. Um, it's kind of nice because you kind of get to explore a lot of different things that you enjoy or that you want to pursue. But also, that being said, you could have multiple different minors that also seem really interesting. Like for me, I think I only have to take one extra chemistry class to actually get a full chemistry minor. So it really depends. There's a lot of options. Sometimes having multiple minors might be more insightful than just having two majors. Um, so it's really whatever you want to do. A lot of people take the opportunity of having another major or more minors to explore other things that they're interested in. Because, you know, going to college, how can you be expected to choose one thing to do for the rest of your life? That's absolutely insane if you ask me. Um, so being able to explore different things that you might find interesting, also becoming an art minor or an art major, just so you can take a fun ceramics class, like that would be really cool. So it really just depends on what you're interested in, what you want to do. So really asking yourself, like, what's fun? Like you can do like hardcore academic science, math stuff, which I love science and math. I think it's so interesting. But I also have other interests as well. So doing like a music minor, which, by the way, not doing that, but super interesting things that you can get involved in just to obviously like explore what else you're interested in. So definitely taking that as an opportunity to really like, like Martha said, broaden your horizons. That's kind of the whole goal of college. You don't need to be set on one thing for like, what, it, like 40 hours a week for 40 years. Like that's ridiculous. Take some other classes, have fun with it. Like you're paying for your college tuition make the most of it, like get your experience seeing what you like and what you don't like. And obviously, if you go through a class and you hate it, never have to take another one again. I went in thinking, OK, I'm going to be in the honors college. I'm going to be pre-med because that's the only option. No, it's not. PAs are better. Um, no, they're just different. That's my professional answer. Um, <laughs> but you have all these different options of what you're able to do. So then also going, I took a music class my first semester, super interesting, learned a lot, very different than taking piano lessons at home. Very intense, actually, but so fun. Um, also, just being able to go outside of that, doing extracurriculars that also interest you. I did intramural volleyball for a semester. Have I ever played volleyball in my life? No. Was it a blast? Absolutely. So really just making the most of your college experience. So you don't have to do a double major to seem impressive. So also thinking about why we want that double major as well. If it's something you're interested in, absolutely go for it and do it. But also if you're just doing it to say, oh yeah, I have two majors, like that's the wrong choice. Like do it because you want to do it. But also if you have other interests, just go and like take a class in that or just go do something with that. Like you can always talk about your experiences with graduate programs. So it still looks just as good on your resume if we're talking about that aspect of things. Yeah. But really do things because you want to do them, not because you feel like you have to. All right. That's phenomenal. So just a couple of quick ones. We've got one minute left. Um, 
Dana has addressed the questions about are all jobs on campus work study? No, they're not all. And you can't. <laughs> Dave just asked, can we hire Sasha right now? We already hired her, Dave. Um, so there are non-work study jobs as well. You'll find those in the, the student employment office. So go look at their at their website and you will locate those. Um, question about pots and pans in the kitchen. So the kitchen is open access 24 seven. Um, while there are some pots and pans that linger in that kitchen, I'm gonna highly recommend that you bring your own because some of those have been lingering for far too long. And that literally brings us to the end of our time. Um, I wanna thank my panelists. I wanna thank everyone who came and spent the hour with us. And if you have any lasting questions after this, um, please know that we are here to answer them for you. You can email us at honors.college at uvm.edu. You can reach out through the Zimi, and I'm pretty sure that Sasha is hovering in that Zimi space this summer. Um, but you can reach out to any of us at any time and we will answer your questions. So once again, thank you for attending. Welcome to UVM and welcome to the Patrick Leahy Honors College community. All right. Thanks, you two. I'll see you tomorrow. Night.